Hello there all you wonderful people and welcome to a surprise episode! We are playing Grounded, we're going to learn a little bit more again about all the different creatures we have in the yard. But this time we are not doing it alone. Say hello to Nick the Beast! Oh, Nick the Beast, we're starting <laughs> off like that. <laughs> hello everyone! <laughs> so that's my amazing wife over there and we are going to be playing multiplayer and we are going to be doing it on WoW mode. So, Whoa. let's jump right in. Alright, so we have been playing a little bit with the WoW mode, just offline a bit, just practicing to see how difficult it actually is. Uh, yeah, this is going to really be a challenge. But, together, I think we can overcome anything. And obviously, with us being small, we want a safe-ish spot. Best spot, right at the start, the baseball base. So, of course, we are going to be doing what we did last time, yeah. what I did last time. We are now going to be doing that. This is definitely our comfort zone. Yes. Um, and I think we can we can accomplish anything from our baseball. Yes, I also, I agree. Right, so we are just going to, first of all, of course, pick up everything we possibly can until the point where we can actually analyze it right over here at the weird little science station. We must just remember that we don't. We can't just jump. Yes, we need the. Uh, yes, we we will take damage, and we must also remember that now with woe mode we also have friendly fire. Which, First time we ever play like that. Yes, there is some a snack bar here for you, my dear, and there are just some safety check little file over here. Um, yeah, just talking a little bit. About hey, hello, Mr. Ant. Example of the Formicidae family. Yeah, the Formicidae. Look how he's looking at us. Yeah, so cute. Cute. So you can see the ant little uh, bobbing its antenna here. That is, of course, how ants uh, detect uh, scents. They actually scent with their little antennae, and they will be tippy tapping each other constantly to recognize other individuals, to recognize it as their species or as a threat. Also, so they will be using their antennae to feel around the world. Uh, well, do you have a spear? I do not yet. Can I no. give you one? Oh, you've got one already. Yes, please. There you go. And there we go. Okay. We've got a spear. And we are now ready to face the world. So, you want to do the honors there? Yes. Beep. And... Nothing. Okay. machine needs all three lasers to function. So of course, we have to craft an axe. I need sprigs and rope. We're just going to be making some rope here. The water is quite a problem. Yes, that is a potential issue. We are going to have to find enough water to survive. Yes, we have to kill some spiders or some spider webs. Oh, yes. Not tonight, though. <laughs> no, probably not tonight. We're not going to be stupid. Or I can yet. drink the dirty water. Uh, that I, I think that falls under the umbrella of being stupid. Now, interesting, though, that you mentioned that you know food and water may be an issue because it's actually scientific that you, as a small human, would need more food than as a big human. It has to do with the area relative to volume, the ratio of your area relative to your volume. Because your volume is where you, your cells with the metabolism is actually generating heat or well, energy and then heat is uh, produced. Whereas your surface is where you are losing heat from. Basically, in, in essence, a smaller creature will have a larger area to volume ratio, meaning that they are losing... Uh, I think a little gnat is bumping against me. Yeah, gnat wants to die. Except gnat has now flown away. Anyway, a small creature would lose heat more quickly than a large animal relative to the amount of heat they can produce. And one of the ways to compensate for that is to have a faster metabolism. Now, of course, if you want a faster metabolism, you also need to take in more food as I'm trying to stabby, stabby, stabby this little gnat. She does not want to be stabbed. Gone now. Anyway, so you need more food in order to maintain your metabolism or to sustain it. And that's why we, as small humans, definitely need to eat more than we would need to if we were big humans. Lucky tiny humans. Well, yes, eating Having is eat fun. More. It's yeah. nice. Eating is paradise. 
Now I'm doing, going to throw a stone at this net because it is annoying me. We will need him for something. Yes, for bows. Yeah. I saw two. Yeah, there are a few here. And of course I'm going to throw miss. <laughs> well done. That was like a pointless throw. Okay, but I'm going to go to the baseball side. I need to go find water. Okay. I am going to carry on trying. I think I found water. To the base! There's some water here, dear. Uh, it's okay, you can have it. I'll find mine. Okay. Ah, I, I saw some. Yes, there. I found. Okay, cool beans. Can we make a fire? Yeah, we can make a roasting spit. Okay. We need dried grass, pebbles, and sprigs. I'm just still running around, just quickly getting my bearings around the map here. It's been a while since I played. And I've just stabbed an aphid to death. So that's our little bit of lunch, kind of sorted. Also nice. going to, of course, spear a weevil. <laughs> I also that's... have a snotty or two. Okay. So yeah, so, so, sorry, I have most likely now killed Sir Snotty the Second's distant relatives. <laughs> that those... might all be his relative. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, Sir Snotty was a pet weevil we, I had in the first playthrough of this game. And of course, Sir Snotty the Second was the one that I got when Sir Snotty the First decided to go his own way. And this is now probably one of his distant relatives. What do I hear? I hear uh, mites, fuzzies. Ah. There, uh, there are you. And you just spear. Are they like ticks? Well, yeah, they are in the arachnid group. So along with spiders, scorpions, whip scorpions, uh, mites, they're all lumped together. But the mites, I think, are closer to ticks, if I'm not mistaken. And there are two spiders, so I'm just going to go stab this one in particular. Stay over there, small red I think they're in the Akari group. Ah, there we go, that's one dead. Oh, there's another one up here ahead. And now he's also dead. Yay! And there goes another Sersnotti. So Sersnotti's so entire family has now unfortunately been massacred in this game. Ooh, and then I needed to get a fly uh, thingy, a majiggy. Do you have one? Uh, what? Dandelion? Oh, no, I do not have. I was like, what fly stuff? <laughs> <laughs> no, I do not yet have, and I almost just jumped down the uh, baseball. So, yeah, that's going to be useful to have. Yeah. I need it even more than food, because I'm also jumpy jumpy. Yes, we both love jumping off high places, and we're so used to being able to fly that it's going to be an, a really potentially a really big problem the fact that we don't yet have the parachute all right we now have a workbench awesome okay cool so i've got your your parachute here nice and i've got weed stems nice although we can't really use it at the moment right well we can technically make a frame but yeah no we can't really we can make a, a pallet so that we can put it on there, stem pallet. Just shout if you need more clover and I can get some more. I'll tell you now. Okay. I actually want to go check whether we can see clover flowers because I quite like clover actually. I know a lot of people do not like clover in their lawns but they are extremely useful plant. They are in the pea family, the pea and the bean family. And they are therefore in the Fabaceae group, and they are nitrogen fixers, meaning that on their roots there are actually little bumps, little nodules, where the bacteria, nitrogen fixing bacteria, will live. And then in the process of living there, they also fix nitrogen from the atmosphere, in, and they will provide the plant with some of that nitrogen that they fix. Which is quite cool. The plant basically gives them a place to live or to attach. And then they give the plant a nice little bit of nitrogen. There we go. That's, well, one. There we go. There's the mite. Uh, the gnat. Okay, I've killed one gnat. I have two gnat fuzz. Anyway, as I was saying, a nice mutualistic relationship here between the clover, which uh, gives the bacteria a nice place to live, and the bacteria, which give them a bit of nitrogen. So that's mutualism. Mutualism just being when two organisms both benefit from the association with each other or from the uh, interaction between them. 
Okay, I realized that I am thirsty again, and they right on cue, there's the thirsty uh, little symbol as well. I'm just going to go drink some juice at the juice box over here. There's a little droplet falling down that's going to help me get through the rest of this day, I think. Okay, and I've put your stuff in the in the chest, eh? Oh, wonderful, thanks. So I'm excited to see also the updates on the game that we haven't even encountered, like the wasps. Oh, yes, yeah. So um, the, I know the wasps were originally planned for the game, and then they were cut, and then they eventually... You know, it became it circulated that maybe wasps would be coming in and then yeah wasps indeed came to the game now that makes me wonder though what other things do they have in store for us yeah because they have been plans or initially leeches were planned for the pond um not sure whether i'm excited about that no <laughs> <laughs> and pond skaters were also planned for the pond i think a little bit more excited about the potential of that and then things like the ant queen were also oh my goodness. Uh, planned for this game a lot of those of course most of those were then of course scrapped so i am very interested to see whether they are planning to do anything with those original slash scrapped ideas ah wonderful you have a palette for us i am the organizer as well yes of course Beast you are by day or no Beast by night, organizer by day. <laughs> Something like that. I can switch in between. <laughs> oh, I'm thirsty. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I... No, it's okay. As, as soon as we can go get some spideys, we're going to make water collectors. And then we should be fine. A canteen. Then we should be fine. Yeah. I suspect that will be in the next episode where we actually try to well first of all make the canteen yeah to keep me safe and mm -hmm. secondly safe when we actually uh, attack the spiders that may be the third episode because last night when we were testing this uh, things did not go well <laughs> for well yeah for me you also died we both died uh, yeah that's true i forgot yeah we both died it <laughs> you just had to put it out there. You also yes, died. I did not die alone. We do things together, including dying. Because a couple that dies together stays together, at least in the afterlife. We are real Romeo and Juliet, aren't we? Yes. Yes, we are. All right. Now... So, but I think we're probably going to do the canteen first, and then we'll probably get our armor. We'll, get, we'll kill some ants. Yes. Maybe get some ant armor. Or the grub armor. Yeah. But that will that will actually take quite a lot of grubs, but we can potentially do that. Oh, almost dropped down that grass. Actually, I just want... This is a grass storage. No. Yeah. The one that I'm building there. Yeah. Okay. Just need some dry grass Free and some dry grass. rope. Do you yeah. have some? Yeah, I'm here at the dry grass. I'll be cutting now. Okay. Did you get your snotty meat on the fire? Yes, I ate one and I put some more on there as well. Right. It's so cute when the food's done, you get a little ting. Yeah, that I know is also new. That definitely wasn't in there before. Not that I could remember, at least. No, I don't think it was. Yeah, definitely new. Which is awesome. Nice little touch. Yeah. Uh, set respawn point for when we ine inevitably die. At least then we can start from here. And shall we place our flag to claim this ball as our own? Yes, yes, we should. We just need one clover leaf, and I think that is in the chest. There's nothing. What? I'll go get some. Oh my word. Wee bye. <laughs> I love this dandelion tuft. Oh yes. The weird thing is though that if we were actually the size of ants, we would barely take any fall damage. Oh, really? At least in theory. You can drop an ant, at least again in theory, you can drop an ant from an, from an aeroplane and it will be perfectly fine. You know why? Because it's so light. It's so light, yes. It's so light and then the little bit of weight that there is is spread out over a relatively large area. And so it's barely you know, crashes in, into the ground. It's a matter of size. There's actually an amazing Kurzgesagt video on that uh, about the, the uh, science of size. 
also dealt with that whole thing I mentioned earlier with small and large animals. Large animals having a slower metabolism than small animals because small animals need to sustain themselves due to their rapid rate of energy loss. That is quite cool. It is indeed. Alright, I've got some... I've got the clover. You also have clover, I assume? Yes, I do have. Okay. I'm just going to quickly stop over here because right over here we have aphid honeydew. So aphid honeydew is a tasty little snack for us and it's also a tasty little snack for ants. And it is created by aphids and it comes out of their butts. So it's a tasty aphid butt juice. So basically it is because aphids are sap sucking bugs, they drink the sap of plants, there are a lot of sugars in there, more than they can possibly use. And they have, you know, co-evolved with ants to both parties again benefit. It's another mutualistic relationship where the ants protect the aphids because aphids are really, 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 really squishy, relatively defenseless, useless little bugs. And they need a bit of protection. And so they have ants protecting them. And the ants in turn get honeydew. Where the aphids taking that ex excess sugar and, and uh, water and creating these little droplets. Which the ants then again tippy tappy on, on the back of the aphid. Similar to how they were tippy tapping one another but a little bit more rhythmically. And then the little aphid secretes a honeydew droplet which the ant then eats. So the ants get a bit of a sugary treat and the aphid gets protection so it's like paying the mob uh, money to, for protection but you pay them with sugar water that's basically what's happening here nature is amazing nature is amazing i think that is when we are going to sleep and probably call it a night my dear believe Aww. it or not i know it sucks but we will be back again well tomorrow actually when we will be playing some Dinkum again. Hmm. And then next week we are back in Grounded. So, pop any questions you may have regarding the natural world down below. And I will get to answering them as well, much as I possibly can. And until next time everybody, stay safe. This is Will. And Nick the si Beast. Signing out for now. And Organizer. Goodbye. And we'll see you guys again next week. Bye. Bye.